Live Better and Longer with The Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert from fitness.com, and welcome to The Fitness Show. So today I want to talk to you about overcoming weight loss hurdles, and so we all have them. Um, it's just about getting past them or stop creating them. Oh my gosh, how many people are creating hurdles for themselves? So I want to go there, and the reason I'm doing this particular podcast is because my group on Facebook, which is called the Hottie Body Fitness Challenge Group, I uh, have over a thousand members, and so many of them are extremely interactive. And I see a combination every single day of incredible people posting personal stats and accomplishments about, you know, I've got Lee Freels, I think, has lost 150 pounds. Timothy Powell is down 130 something pounds pounds. Um, Rob Stewart is 60 something. Melissa DiStefano, 82 pounds, 40 pounds. Michael Jones, 40 pounds. Christine Jones is 30 pounds. Weight loss falling off all over the place. Heather's lost 67. It's just mind blowing. And so, uh, you know, if you've listened to me ever before, you know that people are losing weight with my guidance based off of me just teaching them how to eat wisely. They use the exact formula for weight loss, and they learn how to eat the right amount of the right foods for the size they want to be. They're not buying pills, shakes, supplements, wraps, powders, none of that crap. It's pure snake oil sold by lying liars who lie and take advantage of you. So we don't do any of that stuff. I just have introduced the concept of moderation and making nutritious choices, not perfect choices but nutritious choices, and at least, if nothing else, choices that get you to your goal weight and keep you there forever. I also guide these wonderful people on exercise. And so every day, as part of the Hottie Body Fitness Challenge, I provide a cardio workout. Sometimes it's a uh, four-mile walk-run, and that leads you to go at your own pace but get four miles in. Some days it's bike five miles and jump rope for 10 minutes. And some days it's go take a Zumba class. And so it's it's flexible, it's diverse, but every day there's a cardio workout. And every day I provide several strength training workouts as well. Not only do I tell you what I tell you, hey, do wall squats, but I have a little video that goes along with wall squats. So if you do it along with me, you don't have to think. All you have to do is do. And People are wildly successful with this. And why? Because they don't have to think. They don't have to be an inner fitness expert. They just have to be people willing to move forward, put their boots on the ground in the gym or on their on the road or on the trail and get to work. And that's what we say, get to work. <laughs> and yes, I am a bully and a bossy pants, but I do it all on your behalf. And, and so uh, the best kind of bully, I believe. But I have all these people that are so wildly successful not perfect by any means. They're people who will have a fancy sugary coffee once in a while or they'll have a donut or whatever. But for the most part, they're making fantastic choices and their lives are changing. It's not just about their weight. And boy, do I love seeing the piles of too big clothes that they're accumulating and giving it away. And I love the posts of people wearing jeans and, and holding their waistband out because the jeans are ridiculous. Anna Hodling has gone from, I think, a 10 to a 2. Oh, my gosh. She's wearing dresses that she's had in her closet since the 80s, which is mind-blowing. But anyways, we have all this fun success, all of these proud moments. And then I have some people on the same exact day as I see, you know, 10 posts about, wow, look at my new life and all the great things that's coming of it. I have people say, boy, I've been a part of this group for a few months now. I've been watching. I've been inspired. But I've never said anything before until now. And this is where I am. And these are people who will you know, say they've lost or they're up 60 pounds or they want to lose 100 pounds. And, and I love them. And I love them for coming out of the shadows in our group. And, and you don't have to be part of this group. Mind you, podcasts separate from the group. 
and if you want to be part of it, great. But they're a great source of examples. And that's really my inspiration for this podcast because I'm dealing with two ends of the spectrum right now. I'm dealing with people who are extremely unfit and now are becoming their dream version of themselves. Some of them are halfway there. Some of them are all the way there. I also have some athletes. I have Dave Lawrence today. What did he went from? He posted that he went from about 152 to 143. This is a guy who's already lean. He's in great shape. He runs endurance races, but now he's dropped eight pounds. And he said he hasn't been this lean since he was in his mid-50s. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe you were ever in your mid-50s because you look like you're in your 40s. But he's going to be flying down the course of his next half marathon because he's leaner and he's stronger. He's doing my strength training for runner's workouts. So I've got that end of the spectrum, people that are, they're, they're having their mind blown by what real fitness can do for them. Now, mind you, I'm not doing it for them. I create a plan, but the only people the plan works for is those who execute it. So I get part, I get credit for guidance, but really it's all the other people that are the workhorses. And now I still have a group of people. They're, they've read the exact formula. They see how simple it is. They understand it, yet they haven't committed yet. And they want to. And if that's you, I'm talking to you. Because there are a lot of excuses in this world. We can all go and say, what is the hardest thing? What prevents you from being fit? And boy, I'm sure everyone would come up with about a dozen answers, at least. But not one of them are valid. Not one of them should stand between you and your health for crying out loud. Now, things can stand between you and your ability to go see the latest movie. And things should stand between you and going shopping or you hitting your favorite restaurant. But between you and your health, unacceptable. (laughs) You know, the second you're diagnosed with cancer or diabetes or heart disease, all you want is your health. You would do anything for your health, right? Am I wrong? You get in a car wreck and your body's screwed up. All you're wishing for is your health. You win the lottery, and then you get in that car accident and your body's screwed up. All you're wishing for is your health. So let's major in the majors right now. Let's focus on it and stop waiting. And my profession will be a never-ending cycle of trying to convince people to put themselves first, put their health first, and today's your day. If you haven't done this, then I'm talking to you. If you're halfway there... I'm talking to you. The other thing we deal with is um, right now I have Katie Stefaniak. She's one of my very longtime hotties. She's lost tons of weight. Her husband's lost 70 pounds. I think Katie's down 30-something. But she recently had some deal with her family, was living with her, causing chaos. She was a little bit sick. She gained 10 pounds back. And so yesterday she confessed. She said, oh, I didn't want to come forward. I'm embarrassed. And I'd let you down. But I've, I, lo- I gained 10 pounds. And now she's lost eight of it. But she could have reached out after she lost, after she regained two or three pounds, right? If she would have reached out, we could have intervened and she could have had a buddy within the group to stay on her. And then she never would have had to re-lose the same eight pounds. And so it's got to be constantly pushing forward. Um, So first of all, Everyone who says, I've got no time, I'm not buying it. We all have 24 hours in the day. It's not about having time, it's about making time. And some of my greatest, uh, most inspiring things I see are, you know, Timothy Powell, my guy who's lost 130-ish pounds. He's up at 4.30 in the morning at the gym. Joe Raymond, who's a runner guy. Oh my gosh, is he a runner? Joe Raymond, he is in the gym and he's the only one in the gym because he's there so dang early. Melissa DiStefano, I keep calling her Michelle. She's a lifelong friend and I love it. I love torturing her with my my flubs. But anyways, she's in her treadmill in her bedroom at home running at about 3.30 in the morning. So she's making the time. Now, sure, nobody likes to get up really early, but nobody likes to be overweight. And if you had to exchange early mornings for a fit body, yeah, I take the early mornings. You know, would you re- do you dislike waking up early or do you dislike being 100 pounds overweight more? Most people would say, all right, I'll wake up. If you can guarantee me the fit body, I will wake up early. And I'm telling you that I can guarantee you a fit body. If you follow the exact formula for weight loss and you work out the way I tell you to, a fit body is on its way. 
So you just got to make time. I also have some friends that are working out late at night. You know, they're sending selfies, sweaty selfies from the gym each night at 930. It was late. I was tired, but I did it. And so you've got to force it in. You can do it very early in the morning. You could do it very late at night. You could do it on your lunch break at work. If you work from home, you take your cell phone on the phone conference and you go walk around the block while you're having a meeting. There's no reason to stay stationary for the most part. Unless you're in a group of other professionals with slacks and jackets on, you can probably move. And I recommend when you have a meeting that's one or two on one, do a walk and talk meeting. Get up and go. If you've got kids, baloney. Kids are not an excuse to stay sedentary because kids love to move. Not only do they love when you move with them, but if they're infants, they love when you move them. They'll go to sleep. They'll have a nice day if you put them out in a stroller. In fact, one of the coolest things I see as a race announcer are all of these parents not only pushing one kid across the finish line, that's 13.1 or 26.2 miles, but some are pushing double strollers through the finish line. So kids are happy to be out and be active with you, whether you're both running around playing or you're, you're just taking them with you for the ride. You've got to u- utilize whatever time you have, multitask, make the best of it all. But again, not about having time. It's about making time. And if you tell yourself you don't have it, you're a liar. You're lying for, to yourself and you're standing between you and your dream body, your dream self. And think about it. Who do you want to be? I ask you all this a lot. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be the overweight chick for the rest of your life? Who People say, oh, she's got a pretty face. The one who can't go into a regular store and buy regular clothes and feel good in them. I don't think you want that. I don't think you want to be the guy who's diagnosed with diabetes in a few years. I don't think you want to lose your vision to that. And so you've got to force the issue. Who do you want to be? Think about your fitness level. And sure, we all think about our body and it's great to look good and so forth, but it's about feeling good. It's about not being tired, not being in pain. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be this pathetic person who complains all the time because they're so ghastly out of shape? And when you don't take care of yourself, everything else tends to fall apart too. Your relationships fall apart because you're so focused on your hips and thighs that you hate, that it makes you miserable, that you're cranky to the other people and they don't want to be around you. Or maybe you're settling for crummy people because you don't think you're worthy of it because you don't like you. So you got to push forward. You got to make, uh, you got to make accommodations. Instead of making excuses, you make accommodations to get yourself fit, to get yourself moving. And I tell you what, eating healthy takes no more time than eating poorly. And so you pull up at McDonald's, you say grilled chicken salad instead of Big Mac, boom cost you no more time, and you've done something good for yourself. And yeah, you know what? I did say McDonald's. You can certainly get some healthy food at McDonald's, and I've done it in the past. So you just have to make the decisions, and you have to move forward with them. Um, You can't use your family as an excuse for not being fit. And sure, your kids, we've talked about that. They keep you busy. Mine keep me busy. I have two kids and two businesses, and I find a way. And I am not a superwoman, and I am very imperfect, but fitness is a priority for me. And fitness is a priority for the people in my group who've lost 67, 30, 150 pounds. All of those people have made fitness a priority. You've got a spouse who's a jerk about your fitness. For better, for worse, you stay married to him, but you get your butt out and you go exercise. Because that, that till death do us part will come really soon for you if you don't take part if you don't take good care of yourself. And and shame on that spouse if they don't want you to be fit. And in fact, if you got a spouse who has a problem with you taking good care of yourself, you send them to me and I'll let them know what a schmuck they're being and how out of line they are. So I'm sure you can handle that. <laughs> Although I have, I have had conversations with clients, spouses before. And yes, I consider you all my clients. If you're someone who looks to me for fitness guidance, I'm considering you a client. But I had this one woman. She was wonderful. She was an attorney. I used to take her running. She was doing her best to lose weight and her husband would constantly bring home uh, donuts and chocolates and, and all of this stuff. And I finally, I told him, I said, listen, you guys are spending about 500 bucks a week on me. And you come home and sabotage it every single night. Cut it out. If you want to eat fried chicken and you want to eat pasta and you want to eat all this stuff, do it on your own terms. But when it comes to your home life, stop screwing your wife. She's trying really hard. And he got it. He understood. He said it's mean, it's cruel, and unusual because she's doing her best 
to fight, you know, the world, her old habits. She's fighting herself. She doesn't need to fight you too. So, you know, be reasonable with your, um, with your family. I mean, with your expectations of them, they've got to get on board. And if you're the person who does the grocery shopping, well then screw the other guy. You're not buying the junk food. You got it? You're, if, if your spouse says, hey, bring me home some this and that, and it's unhealthy crap that you're going to be tempted by, just say, uh, sure. And then, whoops, I forgot. Just show up every day without the junk food that is tempting to you. And they'll get the hint, and they'll just start leaving the house to eat their junk food. And when they see you making incredible progress, and they love your new waistline, and they love your new clothes, and they love your new energy, and they're they're uh, idolizing it, they'll maybe jump on board too. And you just say, it's so easy. I follow this exact formula for weight loss. So easy. And that really makes me happy is the ease in which everybody is losing weight. I have a friend, Mike Duche. I went to high school with Mike. Mike's uh, maybe six foot four. He's a big guy. And I can comfortably say he's always been overweight. In high school, he was big overweight. I don't know how much, but he was a big guy. And, um, oh my gosh, he's been following my formula and maybe he, he, I think he mentioned it on Facebook, tagged me in a post about six months ago. Hey, I'm using this and I've lost X amount of pounds. He's down 57 pounds, I think now. And he put this photo and at 44 years old, he looks way fitter than he ever did at 16 when he played high school football and probably baseball too. I mean, this is a guy who he looks the best he's ever looked in, in his entire life, and he says it's easy. And you know what makes me sad is that I didn't give him the information 25 years ago. I almost feel, you know, responsible. Mike, I wish I would have taught you this in high school. So he knows it now, and 40-something is still very young, and thank goodness, at least now, he's going to move forward for the rest of his life with these good habits and this good workout routine, but... The formula, you know, I, I feel guilty that I didn't give it to him yay long ago, and um, he's amazing. But that could be you. And so I don't know how old you are, but if you're out of shape, do you want to stay out of shape for 10 more years? You know, you're not getting any younger. Whatever age you are, this is the youngest you're going to get. This is the most vibrant you're probably going to get if you pursue fitness. So why not have it all right now? Why wait? And that's that's part of the message here is I have all these people who say, I'm looking, I'm watching, I'm watching everyone else be successful, but they're not jumping on board. And I say, y'all come, get on board. It's a really fun ride. It's not a hard, it doesn't require lots of effort. It requires some effort. But if you stay the course, results will come and they're guaranteed no matter what. All right, so I need you to stay loyal to you because you're making a decision. And so, you know, I need you to stay loyal to this decision to get fit way after the mood has left you. And so right now, maybe you're listening to me and you're going, hell yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get on board. And so you will. And maybe you'll start following my group tonight and you'll join and you'll start using the formula and you'll... Maybe you'll lose 15 pounds by the end of this month or the next six weeks. And then you'll be down one day and you just won't be paying attention. I need you to stay the course anyways. I need you to stay loyal to you. Because the reason you're doing this is because you want something so bad. And if you're not in the best shape right now, I know how that feels like. I remember. I'm 40-something pounds less than I was when I was in high school. And I just... I remember the squish of my tummy. I remember the squish of my hips. I remember grabbing a, like a pocket of my hips thinking if you would just go away, that would be better. You know, you grab the fat and there's your bones and you think, yes, if, I was, if my size was right there, everything would be right. That stinks. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. And then when I lost the weight, I decided to be loyal to me. I just decided this is too good to give up. And I like being in shape. And you know what? I still like being in shape. It's been 20-something years since I've lost the weight. And, um, well, about 20 years, I would say. And I love it. I love, 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 love being in shape. I still love being in shape. It's still exciting to me. And so I promise if you stay the course, even beyond the time right now where you're pumped up, motivated, if you stay the course, 
results will come. And that's the thing with the formula is people will lose grand amounts of weight week after week after week, and then the weight loss will kind of stall or even out a little bit. Maybe instead of losing four or seven pounds a week, you lose one. Maybe you gain 0.3 pounds the next week. That's when you're being tested. That's when it counts that you stay the course. When you're tired in the morning and you don't want to answer your alarm clock, that's when it matters most. Jennifer Blumetti last night posted a picture of her route. She ran three and a half miles and she said, oh, I didn't want to do it, but I did it. And I said, Jen, that's the best workout. The one that you could have skipped out on, but you did anyways. So here's the deal. If you quit now, you will go back to where you started. And when you started, you were desperately wishing to be where you are now. So you, when you achieve results, you got to keep them. You got to keep pushing forward and you got to remind yourself is I don't want to slide backwards. Sliding backwards, that place where I used to be, sucked. I may not be all the way there yet, but oh my gosh, I would kill. I would have killed to be where I am now. And so it's perspective. Moving forward, if you make better eating choices every day, if you exercise every day, you are getting closer to your goal. Whether the scale says it every day or every week, if you are doing the right thing, sticking with the formula and pursuing fitness training vigorously, your body will have no choice to respond. And that's something you should know is you are, you are the boss of your body, all right? You tell it what to be. You've already told it what to do right now. So if you look down and you see a belly that's hanging over your jeans, that's your fault. You, you requested that. You said, body, grow big. I'm going to feed you too much food. In fact, I'm going to give you lots of unnutritious food. I'm going to give you extra amounts, and then I'm going to sit down a lot. I want you to grow. You specifically told your body to get wherever it is right now through lack of exercise or through lack of good choices in the kitchen. Or maybe you're listening to this saying, screw you, Fitz. I've actually been a rock star in the kitchen and at a restaurant. And I've been working out, and I'm looking down, and I love my body, and I am responsible for it. Yes, all yes to that. But wherever you are on the spectrum of horrible shape to amazing shape, you are fully responsible for that. Now, the things you're not responsible for are your height. And then genetically, some of us have different body types. So maybe you're a pear shape, maybe you're a, a long and lean guy. We, we can't, you know, that's just genetics. But your definition, your strength, your leanness. Yes, I said it, leanness. That is all you, baby. So if you are super lean, well done. And yeah, we go, oh, there's that guy who eats burgers and drinks beer all the time. And he's really skinny. He does nothing. Well, you know what? He's an outlier. There are anomalies and there are exceptions to every rule. But remember, they're exceptions. Most of the people we know that are lean and muscular have been working on it. Most of the people that are overweight have been working on that too. They have earned every ounce of extra fat they are carrying on their waistline. It just is what it is. I earned mine yay long ago. I decided to get rid of it and I decided to keep it gone. I was like, adios. You're out of here. So I made that fat go away. And so you're in charge of you. On occasion, I have people say, well, I can't lose weight no matter what I do. And the question is, if I, threw, if I stranded you at sea for a week, would you lose weight? Would you come back 20 pounds less? Yeah, you would. And so that means you totally can lose weight. And if you're telling yourself anything other than that, once again, you're lying to yourself. So don't do that. You are totally capable of losing weight. Instant results may or may not come, but either way, when you stay the course, you eventually will get where you want to go. And it may take time. You know, you didn't one day start off really lean and athletic and then eat a donut and poof, the next day you were 53 pounds overweight. It doesn't happen that way. You know, weight comes on. Sometimes it feels like, boy, we can add it faster and it's true, it's so easy to eat an enormous amount of calories and gain weight, but it simply doesn't happen overnight. And so fitness doesn't happen overnight. But if you believe in yourself and you put in the work, results will come. If you go for things half-heartedly, don't be surprised when you only get half-assed results. You know, if you're like, oh, I'm going to go for a walk, I'm not really, done. I'm not going to run, or I'm not going to do the elliptical really hard. I'm just going to walk. You can't 
People don't accomplish amazing things strolling along. You got to push your body. You got to challenge yourself. You've got to huff and puff while you're doing cardio. You have to grunt while you're doing strength training. While you stretch, you should wince. When you do balance training, you should wobble. You should be pushing the envelope. Now, if you got some medical thing going on, yeah, I get it. Talk to your PT, talk to your doctor, find out what you can do. But for all of us, wherever we are, we can do more. Whatever you are doing, you should be doing more. Don't compare yourself to the person next to you or the guy at the gym across the way. Whatever stage of fitness he's at or she's at, great. If they're super fit, you don't have to be jealous. Use them as inspiration. Use them as role models and wonder, think what goes into that amazing strong fit body they have? What kind of work went into that? And then maybe you could put yourself in their shoes and say, you know what? I can probably commit an hour every day. That girl, yeah, she's lifting some weights. Maybe I'll go try that exercise she's doing. That guy, he runs really fast. Maybe I'll start, you know, running slow. Maybe I'll, I'll try to get there. And that's that's the whole thing is constantly pushing the envelope, raising the bar. Do your knees hurt? Okay, go swimming, go biking, go rowing. There's a million other things. And so if you're listening to me and saying, oh, but I can't because I can't run, well, you don't have to run. And if you're saying I can't because I got this shoulder, well, do something else. You know, whatever excuses you've been making to my stern, abrasive lecture I'm giving right now, Put them out of your head because they are invalid. You have to be the person who finds a way. The can't people never accomplish anything. It's always those who think outside the box, who leap outside the box, who say, screw you, box, I'm not getting in you in the first place. Those are the people that accomplish astounding things. And so you've got to just choose it. Who are you going to be? What do you, what do you want in this world? Well, if you're destined for excellence, nobody's going to get you there or accomplish that for you. You have to do it yourself. You know, some people say, I want to be a millionaire, but I'm not willing to get a job. Really? Yeah, you keep playing the lottery. Let's see how that works for you. If you want money, you get a job and you work. If you want fitness, you put on sneakers or a swim cap or a sports bra and you get to work. You say no thank you when the people at your office show up with a tray of donuts and muffins and cookies on Fridays like jerks. Who are those people? We don't like those people. I don't like those people at all. But you can't be you can't be you can't be upset by the results you didn't work to achieve. You can't be upset by the money you don't have because you didn't find a way to earn it. You know, you just have to be the person to lean forward Put on your juggernaut helmet and start crashing through those brick walls. And they may simply be the brick walls that you've laid in front of yourself. You know, you've set up all these obstacles. Oh, it's my kids. It's my spouse. It's my job. I can't, 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 can't. Remove the word can't from your dictionary. Can't is something capable people say to excuse themselves for trying. And the other thing I don't like is I don't like the word try. Trying, I, I like it when I go to um, people and they'll, they'll talk about their vacation and they, get, they gained weight and I'll say, well, did you exercise? Well, I tried, but I couldn't find the time. No, you didn't. Trying doesn't give you bonus points. You get no bonus points for trying. Either you did exercise or you did not exercise. There is no in between. And so be a doer. Be the person who gets stuff done. You've got to move in the right direction to get the right results. So I think that's what I have to say to you. I have to say that those of you who have achieved extraordinary success, I am blown away by you. I'm thrilled to take part in your success. I love every day I wake up to some extraordinary news. Sometimes my news is, hey, I stepped on the scale and I'm finally down 72 pounds. I'm at my goal weight. Yahoo! And I want to fall on the floor. And then um, Delta, was it Delta? I think it was Delta who, it was the greatest, greatest message I've seen or one of the greatest message I've seen. And I'm going to share it with you in a second. It's really funny. Okay, so here's the message I get from, oh, and it's from Delta, but it says, I scared my mother half to death this morning. I ran into the kitchen topless, holding my boobs with one arm and fist pumping with the other while yelling, they fit, they fit. 
I was so excited in my jeans fit that I was too excited to grab a shirt. LOL, two sizes down. Hashtag, small victories add up. Hashtag, I found my figure. Hashtag, old jeans, new me. Hashtag, work it off. Hashtag, just the beginning. Hell yes. It's incredible stuff there, isn't it? I also have someone with a great hashtag, fit nana. And so once again, proving that age is just a number. Folks, you can do better. I know many of you are sitting around. You just ran your fastest marathon this weekend. You've been doing the strength training for runners program. You're at your goal weight. And maybe some of the weight loss thoughts on this podcast aren't relevant to you, but there's a lot that is relevant to you. You're not good enough right now. And I say that meaning I love you all the way. But you can do better. And I want you to do better. I want you to achieve more. I want you to never stop pushing the envelope when it comes to fitness and finding healthy food, and oh my God, Victoria Elizabeth just put up a post of um, veggie sushi, and instead of rice, or even brown rice, they're using rice cauliflower in the roll as a replace the rice. So, So that's it, let's push the envelope. Let's do better in the gym, let's do better on the roads, let's do better in the pool. Whatever you're doing with fitness, more stretching, more cardio, more strength training, or more intense versions of all those things, and then do better in the kitchen. Not only, you know, can you find new interesting recipes, but Anna Hodling had a great post a couple of weeks ago and she said, you know what? For years, I've been going to Subway and getting the same footlong sandwich, blah, blah, blah. I think it was cheese and mayo and a bag of chips. And that's always what I get because it's always what I've got. And today I changed it up and I tried something new. I think she had probably like a turkey veggie six inch sub instead of the foot long, no mayo, no cheese. She had mustard or something on it. And she goes, I was fully satisfied, shocked to find I was fully satisfied. And so this is a woman who literally cut 600 calories out of her lunch just because she thought she'd shake things up and see what it felt like. Now, mind you, she might have left that day thinking, boy, I'm still hungry. I need to add an apple to that lunch or a banana or something. But she didn't. She took 600 calories out of her lunch and she didn't miss it. Are you drinking a lot of water? You should. You know, if you could trade anything other than water for water, that's a good choice. Water's the gold standard. Not saying there's not other good choices, but even myself, I'm trying to do more water more often. So raise the bar, do better be better, knock your own socks off, blow the doors off of these limitations you think you have because there are no real walls in fitness. You're the one setting them for yourself. Don't blame your family. Whatever's going on in their world has nothing to do with you. If you want this bad enough, you'll figure out a way to achieve it. So that, that's it, folks. I'm actually officially going to shut up right now. I appreciate you listening. I want to hear from you. As always, send questions, comments. You can comment right here on the podcast. You can send me uh, questions and comments to at Fitness on Twitter, on Instagram, on Fitness. I have a Fitness Facebook page. I've got my group, Haughty Body Fitness Challenge. I would love for you to join. And again, success stories are rolling in, not only by the day, but by the hour. It's astonishing what we're accomplishing, accomplishing and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. I get to steer the ship, but boy, the people on board paddling, they're awesome. And they will support you. And here's the deal. We can all win when it comes to fitness. There is, you know, maybe in a race or a sporting event, there are winners and losers. In fitness, we can all win. We can all achieve excellence. And uh, I think we should help each other do that. So follow me on those outlets. I want to hear from you. Don't forget to stick around. Help me get more kids moving in schools with the morning mile. And I am out, folks. Get to work. Hi, this is Rudy Novotny, the voice of America's marathons. We all love how much running has benefited every aspect of our lives, so much so that most of us only wish we'd started sooner. Wouldn't it be wonderful to give the opportunity to children of today? Well, you can. The Morning Mile is a before-school walking and running program that gives children a chance to start each day in an active way while enjoying fun, music, and friends. That's every child, every day. 
It's also supported by a wonderful system of rewards, which keeps students highly motivated and frequently congratulated. Created by our favorite fitness expert, Fitz Kohler. Morning milers across the country have run over 2 million miles and are having greater success with academics, behavior, and sports because of it. The Morning Mile is free to the child, free to the school, and is inexpensively funded by businesses or generous individuals. Help more kids get moving in the morning by visiting MorningMile.com. Champion the program at your favorite school or find out more about sponsorship opportunities. That's MorningMile.com. Long may you run.